How you doing? Hey out there. It's 5 a.m. morning scrum. I hope everybody's doing awesome. It is Thursday of the week, right? Um, I hope you're liking and subscribing to our 5 a.m. Master Scrum and telling your friends about it. Hope everybody's doing well. It's about 5.29, and we're having a ball getting up early, right? Good morning. We spent the right. Um, hope everybody's doing good. Lots of Scrum stuff going on. Um, getting ready to do some uh, teaching activities this weekend just to practice bringing up here to Philadelphia from another from other areas and it'd be fun so kind of going over some stuff but what we do here at 5 a.m. Master Scrum is we talk about Scrum stuff uh, agile activities that are either business IT home away and there's a couple of things I mentioned yesterday that I'll bring up today I'm going to bring up some uh, pre-sizing for sprint planning and then uh or, or pre-planning and also some family retro or organizational thing where i my family actually my wife read a book and took the concepts and we did kind of an agile scrum like thing for raising our kids for a couple of years back in the day when our second child came along and uh so we'll get right into it talk about Pre-sizing for sprint planning, and we talked the other day about uh, capacity and overcommitting and what the impact of that is. And you know, preparation is the part that'll set you up for failure or success too. I have a lot of teams that would go in with giant backlogs into their sprint planning sessions. Um, uh, that you shouldn't do. And what you should be doing, you should be looking at your team's velocities. And the product owner should be, work, you know, the Scrum Master should be helping them out. Should be making sure that no more than your your points were from the previous sprints come into the sprint planning session. So what I see a problem with a lot of organizations, and I always had this battle as a Scrum Master, Get rid of some stories. No, we can do it. Get rid of some stories. And I'm like, you're not going to think who's going to admit it. You haven't done it. Just do it. And you're like, oh, man. Um, so uh, their sprint velocity is this, right? So this is what their average sprint. Shh, been like this for a couple sprints, right? But when they come into sprint planning, they bring this many stories into the sprint planning, right? I'm like, why are you wasting your time? You know you're going to be around here, so why are you bringing this many stories, right? It doesn't make any sense, but they do it anyway. So what I usually teach my um, product owners to do is to use the velocity, history, velocity, maybe last sprint, maybe last couple sprints, whatever they like to do as a team, and they say, hey, yeah, we've been doing an average of 40 points or something like that over the past couple sprints. I was like, okay, then they only bring in 40 points worth of work to sprint planning. And once they get the hang of it, it goes so much easier because it feels less frustrating to the team because they can't do all that work. And it's just, it just, once it clicks in the product owner's brain to say, okay, I'm just going to bring in as many stories as that we typically get. I'm not going to bring any more. And in fact, if I can, I encourage them to bring less because no matter how good a team is, there's always some rollover. Hopefully it's not very much. It really should have been only be maybe a couple stories if that. And um, if it's a lot of stories and you got bigger problems, which we can always talk about that. But, um, you know, if your velocity is 40, bring in 35, right, into the sprint. Um, if you're that good of a product owner, you should have a whole backlog of stories all pre-refined and everything for the next sprint. So if you decide that, you know, you have 35 and maybe they got all the stories done, you bring in a couple more stories into the sprint from the, the sprint ahead. So I we'll always laugh at like that. So, well, if you're that good and you're that prepared, it's not an easy, it's, it's, it's easy peasy. All you got to do is bring a couple stories forward from, 
and the backlog or another sprint's future sprint backlog. So again, so to make it easier for success, don't come in, you know, if your velocity is this, right? Don't come up with this many stories in the sprint planning because you're destined for failure. So why set yourself up for failure, right? That's that doesn't make any sense. Come in with this many, maybe even a little bit less in case there's rollover. It gives you pivot room, right? It gives you as a product owner pivot room to change your mind on what you want to do in the last minute, which is okay because you already planned out and you find a bunch of other stories. So if you do that, you're more likely to be successful throughout the sprint. It's just food for thought. Anyway, again, so you're not overcommitting. You don't get the team to commit, overcommit. Come in with a realistic SP, um, expectation on what your backlog should be. And it also, also, also helps you be lean because you're not going to talk about stuff that you're not going to do. So if you come in here and you bring in 50% more stories, that's 50% more conversation during sprint planning that you never really should have done in the first place, right? So that's why people sprint planning meetings take hours and, and so much time and it feels frustrating because they bring in 50% more stories than they actually can do. So, you know, let's say your sprint planning normally takes two hours and that doesn't include tasking, right? Um, say it takes two hours to go over your list. Well, if you are looking at 50% more or 50% above your average, let's say you got rid of 50% of those stories you don't have to talk about, well, your sprint planning is now an hour, right? Or if you're doing hour sprint planning, but you're typically bringing in, you know, 50% more stories, which they do, um, you can get your sprint planning done like in a half hour, what you decide what you want to do. So your choice, overcommit, get more time back. Which one do you want? Overcommit? More time. I think most people want time. I don't know why they do this, but get them more time, right? So anyway, so that's how you pre prepare for success for your sprint planning sessions. Um, and again, like and subscribe to 5 a.m. Mr. Scrum if you like what we're talking about. I wanted to bring another one. I mentioned it yesterday about doing uh, family and non-IT stuff for Scrum, right? So I wrote down in my book to talk about when I when we had our second child came along. I think my wife was reading all these child books and family books or whatever. And um, one of the books <sighs> talked about Agile and Scrum. I actually talked about Agile and Scrum at home. So my wife said to me, well, why don't we do some of that Scrum stuff or the retrospect or some of the stuff that you do in the house to help take care of things? Because it was our second kid. Things are, you know, one's getting older. What do we do? So, and I'm going to teach a facilitation class. And it's really funny. This, I found this little book while I was cleaning up. And this is our notes. So I got notes in there from the day's when we like had these meetings and we would plan for taking our kids. So basically what we did is we wrote a goal section and then what we wanted to talk about. And once a week we would do, you can call it a retro or a kind of like a weekly daily scrum. What's the plans for the week? It was a kind of our sprint planning session maybe. Um, so it was a retro slash sprint planning session. So it was kind of interesting. And I'll give you an idea how it went. So we had goals. It was a 30-minute meeting. It wasn't a two-hour meeting. It was only 30 minutes. So we had a couple goals. So first we set goals. What's the goals of these meetings? And one was better organization of time and resources. Sounds good. Share parent parenting lessons learned. So that's kind of like your retrospective and what goes on. And then we would do a, a short prayer at the start and the end, just to get us into the, the good mood, right? So that we had those three goals, right? And then we had items to duck, to discuss. Um, when we would talk about our schedule for the weeks, things we like to do during the week. So 
we would plan our week, like sprint planning, right? Talk about that. One of the other things, what worked in previous weeks? So we retrospect on what worked from parenting because we, you know, we had two parents and two different things going on and we wanted to make sure we're, us as parents were saying the same thing to the kids, kids. And it wasn't dad do this. And we might want to go back to this because my kids are getting older now that they're kind of abusing one parent over another. So we might want to go back to this so we can plot against the kids, right? Um, what did not work the previous week? So we would talk about what worked and what did not work. Sound familiar, right? Um, sounds just like a retrospective to me. Parental issues, good and poor. So we talked about ourselves, how we, and this is open, you know, open pain, right? We talked about what we did not or did not like about each other's parenting, or we would agree on what was a bad parental take on stuff. But then we would talk about budget, and I do a whole business thing on budget, but we talk about budget because it's really good for families to be in sync on the budget, right? Major bills, expenses, set a date for budget review monthly. So we would talk about that and we would do it. And then goals. Set a date for a one to six month goal and set a date for one year plus goals. Huh. Sounds like a real release planning session, maybe. Hmm. Let me think about that one, right? So those are the six things. Schedule for the week, things we like to do, what worked during the previous week, what didn't work during the previous week, parental issues, budgeting, and then goals so that we were in sync with each other and what we want to do. And we would communicate once a week. And... um I'll give you, I'll read you an example. Um, I even got six, one to six month goals. We have one to six month goals. I should review this. Let's see how we did. I think that we have one to two year goals in here. It's fun reading this stuff sometimes. But we had six month goals. Ah, one year goals. We have a whole list of them. So we took a session and we wrote down our goals for a year from now. What we wanted to do. So it'll be interesting not to read this. Um, so I'll just pick one like this is back in 2013, uh, family meeting. So let me see what we got here. This is good. Okay. So we wrote down that we, we did a prayer and here's, here's the thing. I don't know if you can read it kind of squishy. Maybe I should take a photograph of it. And you can tell it was my wife's handwriting and not mine. There's my wife's handwriting, nice and neat. And there's my handwriting, right? I had to, I had to, I had to wear it. Next show, I'll wear my shirt I got for my, my birthday yesterday. Because <laughs> to talk to it. Um, let's read mine, because I can read mine. So one, we wrote down a prayer. So we did an Our Father. Talk about schedule. So we had it scheduled. Um, I had to go to Detroit. Um, no Friday off and a bunch of things that worked were on the schedule. What worked? Um, work out okay. Gets, went to St. Mary's. Let's see here. So in here we got a bunch of things. What worked out? What, um, to work? Parenting. Oh, parenting. No bribes, eating better, wiggles active, Isabel out early in the evening, need to potty train. <laughs> there you go. Talk about potty training. So these are the parental things. No bribing the kids with stuff like TV. We need to eat better, right? And then we need to potty train the kids. And then here's the bills. Like we had some uh, hospital, you know, hospital bills, car registration, car insurance. Um, still need to look at the budget and, and then we ended the prayer, right? You want help when you're raising kids? I suggest it no matter what religion you are. I am agnostic, which one I don't, I don't have a problem with anybody's, anybody's religion. Um, here's a good one. I come the next week was like, that was the 18th of August. And this is like nine to 2013. We did the prayer thing again, did some scheduling. Um, uh, Greg's to read next 
Sunday's Mass. Okay, that's fine. Isabel, something. Liz working Saturday. Should we, we talk about her Saturdays? That we had some bat, some classes we were given, um, events coming up. So we talked about the schedule over the next couple of weeks. What worked? Greg getting up early on Saturdays um, to study. <laughs> Make Eddie take take something. I don't know. And eating. Um, feed Eddie, not drawing attention to the crib change because we're going to change him out of the crib. Um, more lights for Isabella at night. So those are some of the things that worked. What did not work here, got F, this is my wife, right? Keep working on healthy eating. So um, for Isabella, so I guess we had to help her eat better. Probably the parents. I got a gut. I got to fix that. Um, taking is it what didn't work church to ch Isabella to something weekly weekday I don't know what that means can't read our handwriting Pro parent issues take Isabel out to play at dinner being mindful of what we say in front of Isabel <laughs> potty training in Dutch Wonderland so we, we had a bunch of things that we were working on that we wanted to do, right? Budget, um, doing a budget thing tonight. Goals, so our goal was to do a budget. Goals was me. I was studying for a test. I was studying to take the ITIL exam. Um, closet and office organized. Paint the bathroom. Goodwill run. Patio door. Um, and then we did a prayer. So anyway. So basically, when we were raising kids together, it was great because we would communicate, get on the same track. And we just have like months of this stuff. It's great. I really want to read this stuff. This is really interesting because it brings, it's like having a diary on your kid. Anyway, um, what's nice about it is that a couple things we did as a, as a team, and we were a team, I guess we're way over, we're at 17 minute mark. Um, we would retrospect on what worked or what didn't work during the week. And we would plan what we wanted to do the, the week out because there's always time and issues that are coming up. It's always great to have the parents in sync, just like sprint planning, right? We just talked about that, right? So we knew what everybody was doing on that meeting. And then we also looked at what didn't work or what worked in the past. And probably we should really go back to that, especially with two kids that are, that are trying to manipulate mom and dad and what's working, what's not working. Um, so we're on the same page, but I would advise everybody to do something like that. Have a weekly, um, session where the, the husband, the spouses, the partners are together talking about how to raise or how to live together. It's important to communicate. It's important to be on the same page, just like at work, just like in a home. Anyway, so maybe we'll talk about more about that later. Um, I want to say happy scrumming. And I hope everybody is doing well and has a great Thursday. Only one more day, two more days until the uh, weekend comes up. And start planning on what fun thing you're going to do over the weekend. Me, I'm going to teach a class um, and have some fun. And uh, please like and subscribe to our 5 a.m. Messer Scrum. Tell your friends. We are slowly but surely getting there. I'm working on a new logo, so that will come out soon. And uh, take care. Have a great day.